We are making good progress with the saga. Currently the game ends in summertime, basically in early August. This is where the saga picks up at the beginning of what's called the period of rapid growth, during which wolf pups grow, well, rapidly. They eat like crazy and their weight increases more than 50% in about six weeks time. Here's a graph I made with data about the ambassador wolves at the International Wolf Center. The daily food consumption nearly doubles from the second month of the pup's life to the fourth month. So Yellowstone pups are constantly hungry in August and into September. Unfortunately for them and for their parents, this is also when elk and other prey are at peak health. They've been grazing on nutritious summer grasses for months now, so they're about as hard for a wolf to kill as they'll ever be. Even the uh, fawns and calves are tougher now, the strongest and fastest among them having survived those early months. So the pups are gonna go hungry much of the time. This is the most dangerous time for wolf pups. For example, in Northern Minnesota, the Voyager's Wolf Project has found that starvation regularly kills pups every summer. It's not quite so dire in Yellowstone because there's such an abundance of prey in the Northern Range, but it's definitely still a risk. I asked Dan Staler, head of the Yellowstone Wolf Project about this, and he said that biologists don't really know for sure in detail about these common causes of uh, pup mortality in late summer. They just know that pups turn up dead over this time frame, and starvation is most likely one reason. And the pups who aren't getting enough nutrients can become more susceptible to disease, which can prove fatal, as well as, of course, competitor attacks. So that's what we've got in this new Growing Pups quest. This begins in early August and lasts through much of September. Pups are eating you out of house and home and they just keep growing and you'll be hard pressed to keep them well fed, especially if you've got a big litter. Some pups are gonna die. You may be able to keep them from starving to death, but if food is scarce, they'll grow weaker and susceptible to disease. And if they get sick then, they may lose interest in food, making matters even worse. You're most likely gonna lose some and it's not your fault. You just can't keep everybody in a big litter alive through this period. Initially, we we're calling this quest the starving time, but that was a bit harsh. So we've changed it to the more optimistic growing pups, which I like because you can read it two ways. Your pups are growing and you are growing them, like raising them. What I like about that is this is also something of a transitional quest. The pups are still dependent on you, so you're the active player, you are growing them, but soon they'll be more independent. They're growing up and will become young hunters soon. Anyways, late summer is tough times for pups, especially since the ungulate calves and fawns are now too big for you to carry back to your pups. Pups can actually lose weight here, getting skinnier if they haven't eaten in a while. But there are two mitigating factors. First, because ungulates are at peak health, the meat chunks that you can pull out of carcasses are also more nutritious. They have almost twice the food value as usual. And these pups now can tackle slightly larger rodents. There's still some voles and toads running around for them to catch and eat. But now the pups can catch the Uinta ground squirrels. These squirrels hibernate for over half the year. They emerge in spring to reproduce and then return to hibernation in August. But the young squirrels, born that year, stay above ground for a couple more weeks to fatten themselves up for the winter. And they make perfect practice prey for your young pups so they can provide a small snack. That still isn't going to be enough to keep a big litter of pups alive. This is a big reason why wolves have larger litters because not everybody is gonna make it through the first year. Now, we know that some players accept this as just part of a wolf's life, but that some players really do not want their pups to die, especially from something that is at least partly out of their control, like sickness. To accommodate that latter group in the game, so far we've made it so pups cannot die of sickness on easy difficulty level. But in the saga, it's just not feasible to have a full litter of pups survive. It's not realistic or accurate. And it also just, in a practical sense, just gets too crowded, especially after a few years to have a pack of 15 or 20 animals in your family pack. It makes it impossible to balance the gameplay. It causes performance issues. We just have to limit your pack size by having some pups die along the way, just like they do in the real world. So first we're changing this. So once the saga is out on easy difficulty level, pups will be vulnerable and can die of sickness on easy. But for those players who just do not want that to happen, we're adding this new option in game settings. Right below mate permadeath, you can select whether or not pups can die from sickness. But to preserve game balance and prevent performance issues, if you choose to make your pups immune from sickness, then you will have smaller litters. How many? Not sure, we're still tuning and testing that. You can change this setting anytime, but the changes only affect the next litter of pups, not your current litter, of course. So we hope that this provides a reasonable option for players who just can't stand their pups dying from sickness while also preserving the longer term arc of the life of a wolf pack. This is still very much in development, but it's really exciting to see the saga coming together 
So stay tuned for more updates. Mm -hmm.